Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Pete Yorsky, the Toronto Website Developer, formerly specializing in Drupal, now taking a look at Android app development. And in this sixth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series, I want to move on from our views, uh, text view, edit text, uh, and our image view, and start looking at how we can persist our data using shared preferences. Um, before we do that, you'll notice I'm at Toronto Website Developer.com. Here, you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Each tutorial is only $20. The more you buy, the more you save. And each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20 but do want to help out, please just leave this video tutorial a thumbs up or comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. And as always, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm around 7K now, but I'd like to get up to, you know, maybe 10 by the end of the year, but we'll see. It might be an ambitious goal. So in the last video tutorial, we took a look at image views and setting those up dynamically um, as you get a right or wrong answer. Now I'd like to switch gears and start taking a look at how we can persist the values using uh, a shared preferences object. And so essentially what this is, is really if for our app, we're only going to have one value that we're saving. That's the high score. And so it makes sense for us to save it in a key value parent. And Android provides us a nice API to do that in the shared preferences API. But really, we're going to be using the get preferences method. And this is used when you really only have um, one set of values that you want to save. Shared preferences is used when you have multiple values that you want to persist. Um, and so in order to do this, um, it'll probably take us a couple minutes and we'll have the ability to leave our app, come back to it and still have the same high score uh, left over. <clears throat> so in order to do that, why don't we head back over to our code? Now, first thing that we want to do is actually make a change to our app um, to make it uh, easier for us to localize the app. I realized when I was preparing for this that we actually went ahead and hard coded current score and high score. So first things first, let's go ahead and change that. We're going to run the strings and we're going to create a new string. We'll just copy this just to get the format. And we're going to call this current score and we're going to call this high score. And so we'll just go current score and we'll do high score. And this way nothing's hard coded in our app so we can update this. And we're going to use, we're going to keep these guys and we're gonna call get string, and we're gonna pass it r dot uh, string dot. This is gonna be the current score. And we're gonna add plus, and so that's gonna. So that'll get us our, our current score there, and then we're gonna do the same thing for high score here. We're just gonna go get string r dot string dot high score, and as I type this, I realize we're actually gonna change this up anyways. Let's take this guy out. And here we're going to go private string i score. And then we'll do private string current score string. Right. And then when we're initializing our stuff down here, we'll do the same thing. So we'll do get string. So this is high score string is equal to and then we'll do the same thing and we're doing this because we're going to use it multiple times so current score string now this is current score string and so now that we've got those we're going to take this guy out and we go current score string plus that guy and then this is going to be high score string plus that guy so that's all set up so that's just to enable us to have a little localization. Uh, we never want to hard code our strings in our app code because then you're going to be digging to find it when you go to update uh, or localize an app. So with that, what we need to do is get reference to the preferences. And so we'll go ahead and just add, we'll just add a new variable down here off on its own. And this is going to be preferen preferences. And I think that's what it is. Oh, sorry. That's going to be shared preferences. It's the shared preferences API. So it's going to want us to bring in um, classes. So you'll see up in our import statement, we now have the shared preferences from Android content, shared preferences. So shared preferences, and we'll just name that shared preferences. Actually, I've noticed that Android likes to do M dot shared preferences. Uh, it's pretty common. Um, and so we'll go ahead and start implementing that ourselves as well. And so now we have shared preferences. 
<clears throat> and so in our onCreate, where we have high score, this is going to be changed to this piece of code. Actually, let's just go ahead and go shared m shared preferences dot get int because everything is is uh, stored with an int, and this should actually come after because we're going to use reference to high score. High score string, and so let's just keep these together. So we have our strings together, we have our nums together. Uh, get high score string, and if we can't get one, we're going to set that to zero. And so now this is going to give us a reference to our high score string, but obviously we have to set it, uh, otherwise we're always going to get zero. And so we'll set this in the on pause method. And I don't think we have the on pause method. Nope. So what we're going to do is actually override. And so this is actually at override to designate that we're doing this. And this is a protected method, which is returns nothing on pause, takes no parameters. And in the on pause method, we're going to call the super, which we always do because we want to make sure that the uh, functionality that we need is actually called. And then we're going to actually commit our uh, value. So we're going to call m shared preferences and we're going to call the edit function uh, or rather method and we're going to put int. And so what this does is it allows us, it takes a key value. So we're going to pass in the high score string as our key and then we're going to pass in our actual high score. And then you have to call the commit method and that will actually save the value. And the reason why we do this in on pause, just like we talked about in one of the earlier videos tutorials, um, this is guaranteed to be called when an activity goes into the background. Uh, so you want to do your saving here, nothing really heavy loading or anything like that, because this will take some time. And so uh, you just want to do the, the quick saves here um, and because you might not necessarily get the, uh, what is it, on destroy or whatever it is. Uh, you'll definitely have it in on pause. So save your values here. And that's why we're doing that. Now, if we go ahead and we try our new app out, all that we're going to do is set a high score, get out of the app, come back into the app. Oh, and we obviously have an error somewhere. So let's see what we did wrong here. Let's take a look at our run. Nope, oh, our Android here. Make this a bit bigger. Unable to start. No pointer. So we're pointing to a null reference on which line? 65. That's because we did not actually get our shared preferences. Oh, what a dumb move. So uh, as you can see, we just look through our uh, event log here. And what it's telling us is that we have a null pointer See, we're attempting to invoke an interface method, interface method, uh, get int, right? And so when we look at, and it's telling us that this is occurring on line 67, you can see it right here. So when we click on that, we go here, we're trying to call get int, but we actually haven't initialized shared preferences. All that we did is we said we had a shared preferences object. We didn't actually go ahead and get that. And so why don't we set that up right at the beginning here? And we're gonna call, M shared preferences, and we have to uh, out of the I think it's the context class uh, which comes into the activity. Uh, we get a get preferences, and we're going to get uh, private. And so what private means is it only is applicable to our own app. No other app is available to read our preferences. And you'll see from the documentation that there are a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, if you go to get shared preferences, well, that really doesn't help us, does it? Um, Take my word for it, there's, there's private, there's public, so that other apps can go ahead and, and read your stuff. Um, so anyways, we've got mode private. You can probably actually change this and you can see mode, um, mode private, mode multi-private, uh, multi-process, a few different other ones, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Mode private is what we're using, only our app can reference this. So now when we go ahead and we run this, what is that, 96? Yes, so we have a current high score, we're gonna get out of our app. Right, so our app is no longer running. We are completely out of it. Mathlete tutorial. You can see we have a high score now of one. 
uh, and when the current score is zero, that tells us we actually got out of the app. And so that's how we persisted our value. So that's it for this video tutorial. Again, just brief recap, went ahead, uh, updated our strings so that we localized them property, properly. Then to set the high score, we use the shared preferences API. We created reference to that private uh, variable, but we actually had to grab uh, shared preferences themselves. And so once we did that, we were able to, to grab our uh, saved value in the on create. And then in the on pause, we went ahead and saved that value. And that's because on pause is guaranteed to be called whenever uh, an activity goes to the background. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully you'll join us for the next video tutorial where we'll probably take a look at toast messages, maybe dialogues, uh, and providing some uh, additional feedback to the user so that they know what's going on within our app. Until then, thanks very much for watching. And if you uh, enjoyed this video tutorial and it helped you, please leave a comment or a thumbs up.